Now that we've seen how to linearize a single differential equation, and how we've seen to take how to take derivatives of functions of several variables, let's see how to linearize systems of differential equations. So the example we're going to work with is this one, where x1 and x2 both evolve, and the change in x1 is a nonlinear function of x. It's this quadratic polynomial. And the change, the rate at which x2 is changing, is this other nonlinear function of x. So in general, we write it in vector form as the derivative of the vector x is some nonlinear vector valued function of the vector x. So as before, fixed points are where f is 0. Because if f is 0, then the derivative of x is 0, and x never leaves that point. If you start off with x equals a, then you stay at x equals a, as long as f of a is 0. Okay, So that's a solution. You plug it in, you see it works. And as always, we ask the question, what happens if we start off close to a fixed point? And the idea is we want to use a linear approximation to f. And we saw in the last video on Taylor series how to do that linear approximation. So the procedure is, as always, we let y be the change in x, how far x is from the fixed point. Then we say the derivative of y is the same as the derivative of x because they just differ by a constant. And that was f of x. And that's f of x minus f of a because f of a was 0. And that's approximately the derivative of f times x minus a, where you remember the derivative of a vector valued function is a matrix. So we have the derivative of y is approximately a matrix times y, because y is x minus a. And that matrix was all of the partial derivatives. The first row is the derivative of f1 with respect to x1, x2, x3, x4, xm. The second row is the derivatives of f2. The bottom row is the derivative of f uh, m. In general, if you go to the ith row and the jth column, you take the derivative of the ith function with respect to xj. OK, so now we've got a system. We approximate our differential equations with derivative of y is a matrix times y. Well, we know how to solve that. We diagonalize y. We find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. We expand in terms of the eigenvectors. And our solution looks something like this. y is going to be a linear combination of a bunch of modes, the mo you know, going as e to the eigenvalue times t multiplied by the eigenvector. So the lambdas are the eigenvalues, the b is the corresponding eigenvectors. And if the real part of the eigenvalue is positive, then this grows. We call this an unstable mode. If the real part is negative, it shrinks. We call that a stable mode. If the real part is 0, it's neutral or borderline. And for a fixed point to be stable, all of the modes have to be stable. Because if even one of these terms is growing, you'll eventually run away. y will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually you won't be close to the fixed point anymore. So with all that general theory in mind, let's go back to our example. So in our example, here was the formula for, for dx1 dt and d, dx2 dt. And this was f1 of x, and this was f2 of x. Okay. Now to find the fixed point, this has to be 0. Well, if the product of two, two numbers is 0, one of them has to be 0. So if this times this is 0, either x1 is 0 or 3 minus x2, 3 minus 2x1 minus x2 is 0. Likewise, if this is 0, then either x2 is 0 or 3 minus 2x2 minus x1 is 0. So that leaves four possibilities. Either x1 is 0 and x2 is 0, or x1 is 0 and 3 minus 2x2 minus x1 is 0, or 3 minus 2x1 minus x2 is 0 and x2 is 0, or this is 0 and this is 0. In each case, you can solve the equations and you can figure out the fixed points. The fixed points are 0, 0, 
That's where this is true and this is true. 0, 3 halves. 3 halves, 0. And 1, 1. So those are our four fixed points. Next, we have to figure out our matrix of derivatives. So if you multiply this out, you get that f1 is 3x1 minus 2x1 squared minus x1, x2. So take derivative with respect to x, and you get 3 minus 4x1 minus x2. Derivative with respect to x2, and you get negative x1. Likewise, you write down what f2 is and what the derivatives of f2 are. So at each fixed point, we have to do a separate analysis at this fixed point, this one, this one, and this one. At each fixed point, we have to write down the matrix, and then we look at the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So here is our matrix. And at x at 0, 0, x1 and x2 are 0, and you get, just get 3, 0, 0, 3. So lambda equals 3 is a double root. And you could pick our basis to be 1, 0, and 0, 1 if you wish. So every mode grows as e to the 3t because 3 is positive. And it's unstable. Everything grows. If you start off near 0, 0, you quickly grow away and go away from 0, 0. What about at 0, 3, 2? 0, 3 halves. Then the matrix comes out to be this. And the eigenvalues are 3 halves and negative 3. When the eigenvalue is negative 3, the eigenvector is 0, 1. That's stable. If you go, move away from the fixed point in the 0, 1 direction, that is, if you stay on the x1 axis, then you rush back towards the fixed point, and you do it like e to the minus 3t. But the other eigenvalue is positive. If you move away from the fixed point in this direction, you grow like e to the 3 halves t. So since there's one stable and one unstable mode, the whole system is unstable. No matter how quickly this shrinks, this will grow, and that will cause you trouble. The third fixed point looks just like the second one, only with the roles of x1 and x2 reversed. Eigenvalues are 3 halves and negative 3, and there are the eigenvectors. So this is unstable. This is stable. And finally, the fixed point at 1, 1, we get this matrix. And the eigenvectors values are negative 1 and negative 3. Negative 1 has eigenvector 1 minus 1. Negative 3 has eigenvector 1, 1. They're both negative, so they both are stable. The dominant mode is this one, because it's less negative than the other. So if you start off close to 1, 1, any deviations in the 1, 1 direction are going to shrink really quickly, and deviations in the 1, minus 1 direction are going to shrink, but a little bit more slowly. So let's put that together as a picture. So here are our four fixed points. Fixed point at the origin, at 3 halves 0, at 0, 3 halves, and at 1, 1. Near the origin, you get pushed away. No matter wh where you are, you get pushed away quickly. Near 3 halves 0, there's one direction where you get pushed in, and another direction where you get pushed out. Likewise here. If you start off on the x2 axis, you get pushed in, but there's another direction where you get pushed out. And over here, we got pushed in very quickly in this direction and um, not so quickly in this direction. So what happens is if you start off, say, over here, you get pushed out you eventually approach 1, 1. You start up over here, you get pushed away, and you eventually approach 1, 1. If you start up over here, you approach 1, 1 this way. If you start off over here, you go this way. No matter where you are, you wind up getting sucked in towards the spot 1, 1. 
There are lots of trajectories depending on where you start, but once you understand what's happening near this point, that you're running away from this point, and what happens near this point, that you're running to that that you're getting pushed pulled towards it side to side, but pushed away from it along this trajectory, and what's happening over here, and that everything that this is stable, you understand that there are lots of different patterns. but they all lead to 1, 1. So from just linearizing around these four points, we can get a qualitative understanding of this nonlinear problem pretty much no matter where you start.